ear. Things aren't bad enough. What did I do to deserve this? You were looking at one disappointed man. Wait a minute. Before you get started, let me tell you something. Joe, this is a very tough case. We have very little to go on, and it may be a long time before we find out who murdered Diana Taylor. So don't get down on yourself so quickly. Now that we've settled that, tell me, what did you find out over there at Forest Hills? Not much. I talked to the two security nurses who were on duty the night that Diana was killed, and Heather was in her room mm. during bed check. And the next morning when Jeff went out to talk to her. So what can I tell you? Oh, well, there's still the time in between. But I think we're playing games if we think she could have gotten in and out of that sanitarium and committed a murder in that amount of time. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Did you ever have a gut feeling and just not be able to prove what you were thinking was right? All the time. Why do you think I have to drink milk? <laughs> Bert, little green men are running around inside of my head screaming into my eardrums that Heather somehow got a hold of Diana's key and got into her apartment. But, Joe, the fellow at that department store said that the person resembled Heather. He wasn't sure. Right. Why don't you let it lay there for today? I can't! Then I can think of nothing else but this right now. I don't know. I'm gonna go get closer to Heather somehow. I'll tell her that Jeff asked me to keep an eye on her. Have you heard from Jeff? No. He got away okay, though, and PJ seemed to be fine. Oh, good. Of course, we had a bad scene, you know. Far be it from Port Charles ever to not have a bad scene someday. Heather showed up the day they were leaving. It was her first outpatient visit. She shows up at the Weber house just as Jeff's walking out the door with the kid. He let her hold him for a while. Oh, brother. Oh, yeah, brother's <clears throat> right. I went over there after Jeff left and spent some time with her. And then I escorted her down to Pop Snyder's where she was having lunch with her friend Amy. Amy? <laughs> now, there's a character. Cute kid, I think she means well, but she's into everything. She's what I call a walking loudspeaker. Yeah, good old motor mouth. She was pretty good for you, wasn't she? Yeah. She might be useful to me, too. Yes, if she's close to Heather, you might learn something from her. Except that Amy seems to be down on my case. She thinks that I'm bullying her friend Heather and that I'm trying to help the kid take sides, that sort of thing. I don't know. Uh -huh. Now, Rick and Leslie are going to talk to Amy for me. Maybe they can dislodge some information. Amy visited Heather a couple of times out at the sanitarium before Diana's death. Who knows what she would have said. Well, I don't get it, Leslie. What's so terrible about me being friends with Heather? Did I say it was terrible? Well, no, but you said you were concerned about it. I am. I'm very concerned. So is Rick, who, by the way, is on his way over here right now. Is he mad at me? Is he going to chew me out? Amy, Amy, we just want to have a conversation, dear heart, not a confrontation. Now, what we have is really going to be up to you, so I think you should kind of stay calm about the whole thing. Hello? Leslie, it's Tony Castle. Hello, Tony. I am looking forward to having lunch with you today, and I hope you're not having any kind of emergency at the hospital. I hope I'm not having one, too. Where would you like to go? Well... I'll make reservations, then. The floating rib, which is right across the street from the hospital, is really convenient for me. Good. Then I'll pick you up at the hospital. I will see you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. No, -bye. Bye. listen, Amy, really, all we want to do here is just talk some things out. That's all. Oh, great. There he is now. Right. With his whips and dogs and baseball bat. Bye. Hello. She don't want him, huh? Yeah, and uh, she's looking forward to it, sort of like facing the Inquisition. Hey. Well, I just don't know what I've done that's wrong. Push, Lou. I am pushing, Laura. Uh, we'll hit the place at the top, no? you, Look, you know, you don't need exercise classes. You got a door here that works only through martial arts. Die, door! Good morning. Good morning. You ready for work? No, I'm not. Well, you look ready. Well, yes, I'm dressed, but I'm not ready to leave. Not yet. 
Women. Men. Especially one man, you. What's wrong with me? Why are you going over to Emma Lutz's apartment? Hey, oh, no, no, no. Why, Luke? What is it that you're looking for? I'm not looking for anything. Oh, really? Who said? Who said I'm looking for? Slick did. That's who. Slick talked to you? Slick gave you information? I don't believe that. I talked to him, Luke, last night at Kelly's Diner. You searched Slick Jones out in this town? No. No, of course not. I, I just happened to run into him, that's all. Uh-huh, and he just happened to say, Laura, guess what old Luke's doing with little Emma Lutz? I don't buy that. Slick wouldn't volunteer information to you. Well, no, he didn't exactly, uh, volunteer. I mean, all I did was join him for a beer. When did you start drinking beer? Well, our friend Slick likes beer. Oh, I get it. You wanted to get him, uh, relaxed, right? Comfortable? That's right. Yes, I learned a few tricks this last summer. Oh, apparently you did. Mm-hmm. So I tricked him into talking to me. So how'd you do it, Laura? How did you do it? Slicker's no dum-dum. How did you get around him? It wasn't that difficult. All I did was pretend that I already knew the whole plan. Hmm. The old Luke tells me his every move routine, huh? Yeah, something like that. Oh, you're good. You are good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now you want to tell me what's going on? No, I don't want to tell you what's going on. Luke, I know for a fact that you're going over to Emma Lutz's apartment. Hey, what, what, what is this, a bust? Excuse me, officer. I can't wait to get my hands on that beautiful woman. Will you stop it? I know why you're going over there. You, you want to look for something. Luke, you are going to get in a lot of trouble. Okay, look, I, I'm not going to get in any trouble. Slick and I are a team. I have it completely covered. He's a good man, Laura. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it, it helps a little bit to know that you're not going to... You can out. help me. You could. I you can? could help. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, name it, Luke. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. Entirely out of it. Don't get involved. You just said that I could help. You can, by staying out of it. Don't you understand? I'm almost through. I've almost got this problem solved, and once I do, we can get ourselves back to a nice, normal life. Since when have we ever had a nice, normal life? Well, you got me there. Well, look, maybe we, we, we'll talk about having a nice, normal life once this business is over with, and I'm very close to it. We'll have our little talk over a nice candlelit dinner, okay? Luke, I don't... Do you feel better now? No, I don't. I don't. I feel like I should be keeping my eye on you today. Don't, Laura, don't do that. Don't do it. You'll only mess up weeks of work. I don't want you involved. Slick and I have this covered. You stay out of it. Look, I would never mess things up on purpose. You know that. Don't you understand? I'm worried about you. Do you mind? How could I mind that? You're obviously not going to let me help, and uh, you're not going to let me know what's going on, so why don't we just go to work? What a good idea. Listen, did you, uh, see Scorpio last night? Yes, I did. Last night at uh, Kelly's Diner. You had another dinner with him? No. No, I didn't. We just ran into each other. And he couldn't stay very long, either. He had uh, some kind of a business appointment. Edward, I think I'm going to phone Luke's apartment and see if he's left for work yet. Alex, will you calm down and leave the man alone? Aren't you excited? This could be the day that we get the Ice Princess back, Edward. I am not only excited, I'm very nervous. And it could be that Luke has a certain nervous excitement about it himself, so don't pester him. Oh, but why doesn't he just get here? Oh, why does he have to pick up Laura? He always wastes time picking up Laura. He's not due yet. It's early. Besides, if he does see that Lutz woman today, it won't be until after lunch. I know, I know, but I just want to talk to him to make sure that we have everything covered, okay? Alex, now listen to me. You leave everything in Luke's hands. He knows what he's doing. Remember, he almost walked out on us once before. 
I know you're right, but uh, I'm just a little keyed up, okay? Well, you <laughs> think I'm not. A great deal of the quarter main fortune is riding on Luke Spencer's back as of the moment. I get it, love. All right, I've got to get these documents ready to show Lee Baldwin today. Hello? Alex? Yes? Jim Duval. Oh, well, uh, our receptionist isn't here right now, but maybe I can help you. Someone's with you. That's correct. It's Edward, isn't it? And that means you still haven't told him about our partnership. Alex, when are you going to do it? Well, um, I would say that that's a matter of timing, Mr. Uh, All right, did you, you say? You can't talk, but you can listen, right? Well, listen good. You tell Edward the truth immediately so we can get on with our business. Look, Mr. Wilson, I'm really tied up at the minute, so uh, maybe we can discuss this later. Thank you for calling. Who was that? Oh, I really didn't know the man. I think it was just someone trying to pick my brain about the stock market. Edward, uh, if Luke fails, we're really... Alex, really... don't even think of that word. Now, I'm just being realistic. If Luke fails, I may have to tell James DeVal that I've lost the Ice Princess. I have no idea where it is. I don't know why you thought I was going to pounce on Amy. Well, I guess because everybody's so against Heather. That's not true. We're against complicating an already difficult situation. We don't mind your being friends with Heather. We just hope you understand that this is a very critical time in her life, not to mention Jeff's and her son's. Well, I know that Jeff doesn't want to stay married to Heather, but Heather would never do anything to hurt Jeff, or especially her very own son. And besides, she's getting well now. Amy, no one knows for sure just exactly how well she is, and if she's not totally well, then she'll still be seeing things through a very uh, distorted point of view. She seems well to me, but you're not, um, you're not equipped to really judge that. For that matter, we're not equipped to judge that. Amy, everybody thought she was fine when she took the LSD, and she wanted Diana to have that LSD. I know that, but that doesn't mean that she had anything to do with Diana's death. <sighs> Amy, um, what we really need to know is, when you talk to Heather, what kinds of things do you discuss? Well, I don't know. Everything. I mean, Heather's interested in everything. I would think that you had discussed Jeff. Is that true? Well, sure. Can you remember if you ever mentioned that Jeff and Anne were in love? 